Welcome to the Kent Lab Podcast. Um, what does it take to be a foster parent or a foster home? You, it sounds like you can be single, right? Or you can be married, yes. or you can be. You um, need to be eighteen or twenty-one or whatever. I just went through the process. Do you want me to talk about it? Did you really? Yeah, we. Um, uh, I didn't know that. So I love foster care so much <laughs> that I'm dragging my husband along with me. <laughs> So not only and are you going to be counseling kids during the day at Youth Villages, you're going to become a foster home? Yeah, we just got certified, like officially everything approved, like at the end of last week. So wow. I just started getting calls this week. So Man, some yeah. people, like seriously. like I'm not that great. I, my <laughs> husband calls me crazy, not great. Like... <laughs> But the man, this is this like this when I run into people like that is where I have hope for the future, hope for society. Like, you know how much like, you know, how many lives that you personally have probably changed with your counseling and then foster at, at home. I mean, that's like that's so tremendous. Well, so were I you approved? So. Did you get approved? They mostly cuss me out. So. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you know if you're approved yet to foster? Yeah, um, we are. <laughs> we, we are officially approved this week. Um, and this is where it just. Like the referral process is just complex because like I've gotten calls and we've had to turn them down for like reasons like we don't we don't have enough beds for the sibling group that they're calling about. Or um, we got a referral for a girl that I would have taken in a heartbeat, except she only speaks Spanish and high school Spanish was almost 15 years ago for me. And I Mm -hmm. I can't be helpful for Mm -hmm. that. You know, I would love to be, but. It's also not really fair to throw her into a family with people who can't hardly communicate about basic needs, let alone mm-hmm. help her deal with the fact that she went through all the stuff and is now out of her home. So, um, but I mean, the process wasn't that difficult. Um, so I think you have to be at least 23. It's 23 or 25. I, I, I know that one of our life set youth is trying to become a foster parent. At 21. I don't it know. might be 21. Yeah. Mm. And I'll be honest, some agencies will put different restrictions on it just based on kind of like what they're trying to do. But so you can be single, you can be married. Um, you have to have your own source of income, which sounds like a really weird requirement, but it's to prevent people from being like, I'll take all these foster kids and take all their money. And let me tell you, the money is not there you're not Mm. you're not getting rich off of these kids yeah what Um, are you getting um it just kind of depends on the kid they give a a different daily per diem rate based off the needs of the kids Oh, okay and that rate has not been updated in like 15 years um and it i personally don't think it's actually reflective of that because like okay say you get a baby with like no medical needs just a normal baby that for whatever reason is in foster care um, you'll probably get like $25 a day, which is great, except formula and diapers yeah. and their entire wardrobe that they're going to outgrow in two weeks and daycare costs and like all their other snacks and bedding and <sighs> sheets and all of that. that and next thing yes. you know, you're like, okay, so it's just actually my paycheck paying for this. Yeah, exactly. What about if it's a random eight year old with no medical conditions? How much is that paying? Um, probably about the same. Okay. Yeah, that's that's not even covering the costs. Right, right, right. So yeah. you have to, and that, I mean, the goal of foster care is to treat these kids like your own, and they're not your own. So we're gonna help you out. Mm-hmm. Um, but every foster parent I know that I have worked with is spending more than that daily per sure. diem on their kids. What is the average amount of time that a kid is at a particular home? Like when you become, when when you are ready and you you have a, what's your expectation? Is this three weeks? Is it three months? Um, I would say for a normal, typical case where there's no other family involvement, probably six months to a year kind of is a baseline. Okay. Um, that long. I, I've had kids who are in for three weeks and grandpa steps up and is like, I'll take the kid. Um, and I've some cases, again, like if the family is just not able to make the changes they need to to work that permanency plan, it, it could be a couple years. Hmm. Um, but usually like six months to a year is like a really good middle ground number. That I we see. Throw out. How do you make sure when these kids go into these homes that they're not being sexually abused? I mean, there's probably abuse of all kinds that can happen, right? Verbal abuse, awful. 
physical abuse, awful, but also more easily noticeable, right? If someone's getting beat up, a kid's getting beat up, you can see that. Yeah, I mean, if they're covered in uh, bruises, that's yeah. fine. something's going on. So, yep. I mean, at baseline, before you can be a foster parent, you have to go through that background check, which is how we find out if you sold drugs at 18 or whatever. Okay. Um, and that includes a check of, like, any past allegations of child abuse, um, so if somebody had made an allegation against you in the past or you'd been convicted of child abuse in the past, that would show up. That would be a, a big red flag. Um, so you kind of have to get through those baseline things. Um, obviously, that doesn't catch everyone. If you've never been caught before, you can slide on through. Mm-hmm. Um, with youth villages, we are providing in-home counseling services no less than once a week to these kids. So we are in the home. We are seeing the environment. We are talking to the families. We're talking to the kid. On top of that, the DCS worker is supposed to go in the home once a month, at at least COVID's been a little different, but they're supposed to be making contact with the kid and the foster family. Um, uh, Conflict of interest for me to go with youth villages. So, but the agency that we certified with, it's kind of the same thing. They're having regular contact with the families, um, the case managers with our agency. They're helping with visits, that kind of thing. Um, so I just have to think that you would have to work really hard to be abusive or neglectful because you literally have people in and out of your home checking on your family every single week. Yeah. It does happen. I mean, it is... It has happened with kids that I've worked with that they have been in foster homes and have ended up being abused in those foster homes. Um, but it, it really doesn't happen as much as some of the horror stories we hear on like TV shows or whatever. Yeah, no, I'm not surprised by that. And, and I'm also not shocked that it happens. And also it happens with people with their own kids. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, uh, I just would think of like with my five kids, if I would send them out for, f- to random foster homes through youth villages or any agency, my radar and like concern for that is would be extremely high. You know what I mean? To send kids out. But, but that's not what we're dealing with here. Right. It's not like, well, you, let's take my kids that have a good home who dad who makes tons of mistakes, but at least loves them and tries and send them out. No, we're not dealing. We're saying these kids don't have a place to sleep. Now what's a good option now sending them out into homes that's approved and checked up on and you have a counselor going in and all these things. Sure. I mean, I don't know what else, what else will you do? Like, so there's some risk to that, but it's a lot better than sleeping on the street. Right. I mean, what, what else, where else do you really go? Yeah. Um, the, uh, anything else you want to touch on with foster care in particular? Um, I, I mean, again, just a huge shout out to anybody in the community who's even considered it. And you know, there's lots of options like, correct me if I'm wrong, Ellen, but I believe you can be like an emergency foster home as well. That just takes like, emergency cases where they just need someone to go for like 24 hours is that I've heard of that if it's a thing there's not it's not a thing you can <laughs> she doesn't want to <laughs> allow that to be a possibility but it's that not, is a thing isn't it uh, it is but it's not recommended and you'll right. see that when kids are first coming into custody and they're struggling to find a home somebody will say well I can't take them long term but if they need a bed tonight they right. can stay with me um, but that's not really providing stability if they're doing that for three weeks. Right. Absolutely. Right. Sure. They're that's not getting sense. services. They, I mean, might not even be getting like basic medical needs met because they're, they don't even know where they're sleeping at night. You know, at least with their bio family, mm-hmm. they knew where they were sleeping that mm-hmm. night. That's some kind of consistency for them. Right. Um, so, I mean, we really need more homes so we don't have to bounce them one night, mm-hmm. you know, from home to home to home. So we can say, okay, We've got this list of people who have space that we can actually try first that Mm -hmm. would be a long-term option. Mm -hmm. How often does a foster home turn into an adoptive home? Does this happen or is this very uncommon? Um, I don't know that I can give a good answer on that. Um, I mean, I think if you have a kid in your home for two or three years and it goes to adoption, it would be really hard for me to say no because they'd been in my home for two or three years. Like right. there's an attachment there. Yeah. Um, yeah, that is tough yeah. because, um, but you they're know, two separate things in development and in marketing. Like we want to always talk about our greatest success stories. So I can think of several, um, that we've really put out there that have been great success stories and have been adoption stories, but we also really cherry pick those to say, Oh my gosh, this is, this is awesome. 
I mean, we recently uh, had a great family. It actually got national um, attention, um, the Neal family who yeah. adopted. And it was just such a great story. And it was just so much fun. And all the news stories talked about it. It was just a really, a, it feel like it makes you think, yeah, I can, it, it provides this like, putting those stories out there provides like the sense of normalcy that I think some people have this like image of what foster care is and these kids coming in and how bad it could potentially be. And, Oh, we don't want to bring strangers into our home. And then we really want to put out there that uh, like a large majority of these are just normal kids who just need a family and are so incredibly grateful to just have someone to sit at the table, to have to sit at a table and have dinner. And we want to project that out there and say, you know, this is something that's viable like if you have any desire to to help kids and you know bring them into your home like it's it's it can be a very normal thing so is that accurate because that would not have been my uh, guess Mm -hmm. or estimate either that a lot that some of these kids I I guess I would have been thinking more in terms of these are very troubled kids and if they're going to come into your home oh there are absolutely plenty of that okay absolutely okay but also plenty of the kids just grateful to have a bed to sleep in and food to eat yeah. Yeah. What are is there anything you want to add to that, Ellen? No. Okay. Well, we do. I mean, Youth Villages deals with tough kids. And I, I mean, was going to say, said Youth Villages, before. we're like really proud for helping stabilize some really tough kids. We and take, so our yeah. perspective of the kids that are in custody is a little skewed like that. Like the calls I've gotten this week have been really normal kids that you know, like I said, for those reasons, like, oh, the sibling group was just too big for the space that we have in our house. Like they were like really, they were probably a lot like your kids. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm making an assumption that your kids are like really sweet. I'm and, sure like, my kids are stuff. way worse. <laughs> They're super cute. I don't doubt that. They're cute, but uh, um, I don't doubt the kids you got called on are probably way better than our kids. Uh, <laughs> so uh, like a lot, I don't know what the question was. I'm you, we were talking about the kids, kids that, that go into foster care. Um, yeah, I mean, so like a lot of those kids are just like, they really are normal kids. Yeah, um, okay. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it would be like walking down the road in your neighborhood and seeing kids and they, they could be pulled into custody if something was going on in that family and you didn't know and they're just, in your mind, normal kids. Mm-hmm. So Wow. So is it really like that or are you just saying that? Because that seems really surprising to me. Like if that like, they're normal kids or that no, no, that would be somewhat like walking through your neighborhood and just winding up having a few of those kids at your home as a foster situation. Like that's just not what I would have pictured, I guess. Uh, one of my neighbor's kids got pulled into custody this week. So yeah. So then there you go. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I would personally probably not feel comfortable taking the kid literally from down the street. Cause you know, I, I just, want to be able to separate myself from everybody for a minute and living next door to the kids Mm -hmm. parents just causes a lot of issues when you're trying to have safety and that kind of thing Mm -hmm. but I mean yeah I mean unless you know the families and you know abuse or neglect isn't going on it it could be families on your street Hmm. okay so Tennessee needs more foster care families homes the United so does the United States more foster care yeah okay so if anyone's listening like oh I don't not so sure but maybe I'm interested now they can go to youth villages dot com or dot org the website org. youthvillages.org if they're in Tennessee right or in any of the or states anywhere. that you guys are in mm-hmm. um, or if they don't have access to youth villages they can see what a local agency might be that works with foster and get information there's Excellent. no expense other than caring for the kids but it's not like adoption where it costs 40 grand or 20 grand or anything like that right so there's well, no massive upfront expense and when you're adopting foster. from foster care the agency pays for everything. Youth Villages pays for everything. If you and go foster care and then adoption. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And then okay, so even, some benefits there. You know, for kids who have those higher level needs that are still going to be there post adoption, um, a lot of times there still is a daily per diem afterwards if you're adopting from foster care. Okay. So they really try and take care of the families. Okay. Um, so having money up front is not a requirement. You need to have a bed for the kid to sleep in. Mm-hmm. Um, do they have to have their own bedroom or not necessarily? Nope. I've got three beds set up in our bedroom. They have to have their uh, own bed. Have to have their own have bed. Their own bedroom. Okay. Um, what else would they have to have? Well, they'd have to have the time and attention to take care of the kid properly, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, like you would your own kid. Just your own kids. Nothing mm-hmm. Nothing crazy there. Um, any other things that they'd need to have or requirements or qualifications? I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Um, there are some like weird rules. Like if you are cohabitating and not married, I think you have to have lived together for at least a year. Mm. 
in, or at least the states I've worked in, it, it can vary from state to state. Um, I think if you're married, they would like you to have been married for at least a year, or if you were cohabitating before, you know, at least okay. a year. Um, stability. Just so, yeah, mm-hmm. so they know that your family's had some stability, that mm-hmm. you didn't just get back from your honeymoon after never living together before, and you're like, right. let's bring some kids in. You're not just f- fresh off the uh, Vegas wedding. Right.